Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Docker images and how RM actually makes your image bigger, uh, as well as some advice on how to you know avoid this. But anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, for the sake of discussion, we're going to be making a very, very silly Docker image today. Um, it's just going to make a file full of random bytes, but I'm going to use this image to uh, show us what's going on here. Uh, I did another video on Docker. I will try and link that in the description. It goes into a little bit more detail about the layered file system, uh, but we're going to be, you know, diving head on into it and showing how it works. Uh, so let's start by making a doc file. And we're just going to source from Focal. Uh, we're going to do two things here. We are going to um, grab a bunch of bytes. Let's do 1,000 million uh sure 10 million bytes uh and we're gonna write them into or 30 million bytes uh and write them into a file called f and in another instruction we're going to delete that file so we're just going to create a file and delete a file um I've, I've seen this happen in a lot of docker files you know not for just like random bytes but for you know you download a tar you put a file in a location and then you delete it um and i'm going to show you today that this actually you know this this will always remain in your image uh, even though I've deleted this after. And in fact, deleting it actually makes the image even bigger. So let's start with that. Uh, I'm going to do docker build dash t test dot. Now I'm actually using podman instead of docker, but I've aliased docker to podman. So if your output looks a little bit different than mine, um, that's why also you know, your version might change as well. So that might also modify things. But uh, podman version, this is the version that I'm using. 221 at the moment. Um, and interestingly, if I do Docker version, it also says 221. Uh, but that's because Podman looks at uh, argv0 to figure out what to put in this uh, thing here. There's no such thing as Docker version 221, so um, that's garbage. Maybe I should have picked a smaller number than this. <laughs> let's, uh, let's step that down by an order of magnitude, and hopefully that'll finish faster. This is now 3 million, so that should be 3 megabytes. Oh, I forgot to grab from you random. <sighs> it's waiting for me to type stuff there. Okay, we can put it back to 30. Um, let's do this now. <laughs> this should hopefully complete, you know, a little bit faster. Right? 30 megabytes shouldn't be a big deal, right? <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> um... And now it has to commit the image. Um, once we've built this image, we can actually inspect it by doing Docker history on, uh, we call their image test. And this will show us all of the layers of our image as well as their commands. I actually have to expand this out a little bit because this one has a bunch of white space in it. So it, it tables weirdly. Um, and again, this output will differ based on what you're doing. Um, you'll notice here that we have these layers here. Um, these come from the base image said so focal uh, ubuntu focal um, and there's you know four four layers here and a fifth layer which this is the the end of that image which just sets the entry point command um, so we're going to ignore these four layers or these five layers for today uh, these come from the image itself and you'll notice here that we still have this 30 megabytes in our image uh, and if we do you know docker images, you'll see that focal should be about 60, 76 megabytes. Uh, yeah, 75.3 megabytes. This is the focal image. And you'll notice my test image is 105 megabytes, even though we deleted the file. Um, and that's because Docker uses a layered file system. So every layer in your file system or every layer that you run is always going to be in that image forever, unless you do multi-stage and I'll talk about multi-stage in some other video. Um, but you'll see that this, this layer sticks around, and so it, it adds bulk to your image. And in fact, this layer where we delete stuff also has a size, and I want to show you the visualization of that size as well, um, so you can see what it, why it's actually you know 1.5 uh, kilobytes here. And so what we're going to do for that is we're going to use uh, podman image save. Uh, we're going to export our image to a tar file. And I think it's also docker image save. I think podman uses the same command line here, um, but I, I wasn't sure, so I, <laughs> I made sure to use the podman one. Um, and so now we should have a TGZ that represents our docker image, and it should be about 100 megabytes. Yeah, 100, 101 megabytes. It's slightly smaller than this because uh, there's 
some other metadata here and it does some extra compression here. Um, but let's actually untar that. tar xf test dot, uh, dot, dot slash test dot tgz. And you'll see that we get a bunch of stuff here. Now, uh, the important stuff here is the manifest, the repositories, and this JSON file. And we'll go into what these tars are in a second. Uh, repositories um, just says like where it came from and what the revision is. Uh, there's a little bit of, there's no new line at the end of the file, so it looks a little bit weird. Uh, this manifest, we'll look at that in a second. I forget what this file is. Let's see, actually, jq manifest.json. Uh, oh, right, so the manifest tells you how the image is built up. You'll see it knows what tag it is, or the original tag at least, and uh, it knows the configuration of that image. This file, I believe, is specified, and this uh, configuration JSON is specific to the implementation. Um, let's see, let me look at 853, 8353. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So this tells about all the commands that it ran, including this crazy command here, but this is from, that's from the base image. Uh, it also talks about the layers, and it provides some metadata about when it was built and other stuff like that. Um, so this is, I believe, the non-standard file, and the manifest is the one that actually matters for rebuilding an, an image. Um, but you'll notice we have these layers, and each of these layers is a tar file. Uh, and they go from the oldest to the newest. So this will be our RM layer, and this will be our file layer here. And uh, let me just do this again so that it's easier to look at. And cd into out, and we're going to make a new directory. Layer, I don't know, layer zero, sure. Uh, I'm going to unzip this layer here, which is going to be our, um, our layer which generated that that giant file well it wasn't that big tar dash asset dash xf this layer here and so you'll see here that we have oh it also wrote something into run what did it write into run oh maybe it read that directory and so that's why uh, oh <laughs> i guess uh podman also writes this empty container m file into run which I didn't know. I learned that today, I guess. Uh, but this is our, you know, you know, our 30 million byte random random binary file here. Uh, so that's that layer. And if we look at this bottom layer here, this is the one where I actually wanted to show you that um, that the image actually gets bigger. And the reason it gets bigger is uh, the deletion of a file is represented as what's called a whiteout file. And if we do tar-xf this, uh, it looks like there's nothing, but if we lsal, you'll see there's this wh.f. And so this wh dot and no permission bits, this is what's referred to as a whiteout file. And when your container runtime builds its layered file system, this says, you know, don't look at previous layers for this file. It has been deleted in this layer. So, you know, this will get layered on top of the actual uh, F file, and so when you look downwards to find F, you'll see, oh, I found a whiteout file. That means F doesn't exist. And so this, you know, this tar in this layer has a size, and so your image gets slightly bigger. Um, but anyway, I wanted to kind of show you some cool stuff and how you can poke around inside of a Docker image. Uh, you could also untar these other layers and see what's going on there as well. So if we make to layer two, uh, what's the one that has all the stuff in it? Should be, should be this one. Should be our first layer here. Yeah, and so this will be kind of your, your root file system and where all of the files get poked in. And so you can see, if you look inside user bin, these are all the executables that the bare bones Ubuntu image ships with it. Uh, and so, anyway, that's how you can poke around in images. It's kind of cool. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. If there's additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.